Hi guys and welcome to Transport Fever 2. Yes, it's finally here and I tell you what, my head may explode due to sheer excitement at some point during this video. Two quick things to get out of the way. First of all, there will be a live stream tonight. You can find the details for that in the video description. And secondly, if you'd like to support my channel, then you can pre-order the game on my official game store. And again, the details for that are in the video description. And there's a 10% discount. Go check it out. Right. What are we going to do? We're going to be doing Asian Islands. That's going to be the theme of this series. And I've come up with what I think is a really nice map seed. I tried like loads to get exactly what I was looking for. The map seed I'm going with is Sky Map. Right in the middle for hills. One notch in for mainland. One notch back for islands. Forests maxed out. Very large. One to one. High number of towns and medium number of industries. And what you get is this. I think this is a really nice map. And we're gonna be using the Asian vehicles. Now, in, in Transport Fever, we had Europe and USA. Asia is new, so I thought that's the one we'd go with. We are, of course, starting at the earliest year, which is 1850, and we're playing on medium difficulty because easy is too easy, and hard is just insane. Right, let's do it. And here it is. And man, they have done a fantastic job with the visuals. The game is beautiful. I mean, it really is. I used to have to do so much work to get to get a map looking this good, and it just looks this good right from the beginning. Now, we want to see this stuff running. So, in this episode, I'm going to try and do two things. One is to put in a stagecoach network, and the second thing is to put in a very profitable oil line. Now, the reason I want to do those two things is to show you how the game has changed and to show you some of the new mechanics. And those two things kind of show things off really well. The first thing, Stagecoach Network. I tried to do this before in Transport Fever 1 and it really doesn't work because it takes so long for the stagecoaches to get from A to B that years roll by and you get behind on the train technology and everything else and it just doesn't work. Okay, well, not only have they added um, like half speed and quarter speed, which were mods that we used to have in uh, Transport Fever 1, uh, they've now added, added paused. So the date never changes. Now, I love this because this gives you the opportunity to set up a transport infrastructure as at 1850. Because like, it's always bugged me that you, you start on a map and there's nothing. There isn't even a stagecoach line or a wagon route anywhere on the map. Now, if you want to, you can just pause it, let it run, Right, and you can get all of your stagecoaches set up before you start. Now, if we, um, if I just pause it for a second. Um, no, no, yeah, uh, there's so many things I want to show you. Okay, there is a, a new overlay, which is the destinations overlay. And as soon as you start to run it, you'll start to get information on destinations like these blue lines, right? And if I let it run, you'll start to see these updating. And it tells you the number of people who are traveling in private transport on these routes. And this updates in real time. So if I speed it up, you can see we've got three, five people traveling this route. A couple of people going up there. Oh, five on this route, seven on this route. And if you look around, you can see the popular routes. Oh, there's 11 people headed up in that direction. By the way, the um, the towns, let me start uh, turning things on. Uh, the towns are all named after my patrons, my uh, my biggest supporters and biggest donors. So you'll you'll see your all your names on there. Big thank you to all of my patrons, without whom I couldn't do what I do. Robbie Fuller, Joe Berg, see what I did there? <laughs> oh yes, we'll we'll get more into that. All right, so. This destination thing, this destination thing is really useful because you can see what are the routes which are really worth doing. So you can see, heading up to Barton Town, yeah, not really that many people, but people traveling between Blind Archangel and uh, Alex Town, loads of people. Now, there's nobody traveling from Alex Town to Guggets, but that's because the roads aren't linked. This is another thing that's different. Roads, you don't have road connections to, between all the towns anymore. 
whereas you used to. So I'm going to be putting in uh, some of those road connections. All right, cool. And as soon as you do that, people will start using them. And again, you start the, it starts updating the information in real time. And if you let it run for a bit. Now, the thing is, in Transport Fever 1, you, like, you didn't want to let it run at all because um, it's, it's wasting time. You know, you're always up against time. But with this, I love this feature. This is like the best thing. Um, while I've got the game running, let me just show you how gorgeous things are just very, very quickly. So, for example, we've got this farm. Look. Oh, yeah. We've got animated farm animals. We've got cows. And not just like on the farm itself. If we look around, you know, you know here we go. Look, look, fields full of cows, tails swinging around, munching the grass as they do. Oh, look, we have got, we've got a wild stag just wandering around. Awesome. You know what? Let's slow it down so we can enjoy them. I, you know what? I think double speed is probably like normal speed. Uh, we've got another field of cows over there. Look, sheep. We've got sheep. Look at them. Having a lovely time. Um, and there's, there's horses and there's bears in the woods and all the rest of it. Look! Flock of birds flying along. And if we if we look down... Oh! Yeah, there they are. There's some fish swimming around. And you get them in the sea, you get them in rivers and lakes and all that kind of stuff. Alright. That's enough of that. So, where was I? Buildings. Bus stops. I'm going to throw a bus stop in there, bus stop in there. Then I'm going to head over to Alex Town. Where's very central? Here's, I guess, very central. There and there. And you can see that they've changed things like the highlighting. So. Now, one thing I've got to say I'm not that keen on is the colours that they've chosen for the land use. Um... I really would have liked it if they'd gone with slightly stronger colours. All right, that's that done. Uh, that's that. So we've done Alex Town, we've done Blind Archangel. I'm going to do Barton Town as well up here uh, for a very specific reason. We'll put the bus stop in there, and I'm going to do the same thing here. Just complete this road so that we've got a turnaround place. So let's do it like that. All right, cool. Right, line manager, the UI. Most of the functionality is like exactly the same uh, as with the old transport fever. So I want to go from... Now, I could do a route from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. But, and this is why I wanted to pick this particular route, I'm going to put in a little bus stop. And that allows me to show off the modular buildings. Oh, yeah. So we're going to go with uh, a modular bus station. Now, these things are these things are awesome, like seriously awesome. Take that up there, take that out there, and then I'm going to put in a this bus station. I'm going to rotate you around just a little bit, like that kind of thing. I want to be pointing at the other roads, and I'm going to put you in there. Okay. So if you click on it, you can now configure it and you've got uh, different street accesses. You've got just like a regular street. So if I want to just have a street going out the back as well, I can. If I want one way, so go in that way, come out that way, you can do that as well. Uh, you can add additional platforms to extend it. Um, and, and the same with like you can add, you know, I can add cargo to it as well if I want to have a cargo station as part of it but you know what um what am i going to do uh, i'm going to add i'm going to add a street access uh you know what let's have a street access there and we'll have a street access there now it's quite expensive so just keep an eye on the money that you're spending let's grab line manager so add a station so where are we going from we're going from uh, from there down to there Another new line, which will go from there to there. And we can have another new line, which goes 
from there to there. So let's put in our depot, maybe up the top here. So let's flip you around. Let's pop you in. Maybe there. There we go. Okay, so then buy vehicles and we'll say passenger. So we've got this Troika, which is a, a three horse cart. I'm thinking to put 10 on each line. So let's have uh, 10. Yeah, well, I've already bought four, so I want another another six, please. Thank you. Uh, so that gives me 10 vehicles, which we'll put onto line one. And then buy another 10 to go onto line two. And I keep clicking on that. I'm so used to transport people one. Uh, and another 10 to go onto uh, line, oh, come here, to go onto line three. All right, cool. So uh, let me repeat that around the place and then we'll see what happens. Okay, all done. Let's get rid of the, um, the industry because we're only dealing with passengers at the moment. So what we're gonna see now, when, when I turn this on, and let me show you the, let me show you all the routes that I've put in. We've hooked up uh, Blind Archangel, Alex, uh, Alex Town, Barton Town, Cretchy over there, Gugget, Hogbriff, uh, Kirkpatrick, and Corpse Hatch over there. So most of the mainland is all hooked up. Now, if you're wondering why I haven't put in a line between Barton Town and Kirkpatrick, it's because, go away. It's because it looks like this <laughs> down here. It's it's pretty brutal. Now, I, I could have done something like around the coast, but then, then it becomes too long, and it's uh, it's a pretty long route anyway. So I decided against that. But what we're going to see when we turn this on is those blue lines will start to turn green. Shall we? Uh, shall we do it? Let's do it. So let's turn on our uh, our destinations and crank this up. And you can see this all still blue. Everybody using private transport, but. We go, we, I wonder, we're going to see our first passenger somewhere. Where's our first passenger going to be? Uh, you, uh, you know what, I need to turn on, uh, let's see. Stop, bus stops and tram stops. There we go. Then we'll be able to see. There! Ha <laughs> ha! There you go, Sam. First passenger in your town. And pretty soon, we should see the return of the posh horses. <laughs> I know you've all been waiting for it. Where are they? We're here. No, no, we're not. <laughs> here we go. Yes, the return of the posh horses. Posh horses too. Posher than posh. Electric boogaloo. We're back. And my God, we've got some good drugs. Look, look at us go. You can't even keep up with us. We're so bloody fast. <laughs> I d we'll be doing more of that on the live stream. Oh, there they go. You know what? Why am I chasing it? Why don't I click on it and follow it? There we go. Look at us go. My God. We're only horses, but we can do 50 miles an hour. Wow. Formula One horses. Powered by crack. Oh, look. There's a bear. You didn't see anything. Oh, look. Bear in the middle of the... What the... Bloody dangerous bear. Watch where you're going. All right. So, that's enough of that. Uh, but what we'll see, hopefully now, now that they're, they're starting to, to go, is... Yes. We're starting to see green lines appearing for public transport. And look at this. We've got 20 people using public transport there. 24 here. 20 here. How are we doing over here? Oh, 22. And going up. Over here. 28. Good Lord. Holkelbriff's going to be a bit of a hub, I would think. Nobody using the... Um, Kirkpatrick Honkerbriff line yet. I wonder if that means that I haven't put vehicles on that line. I bet it does, you know. You know what? This is the nice thing about this. I don't even really have to pause it. The only thing I have to worry about is uh, is my loan interest. And I should show you this because they've done uh, they've done kind of ninety percent of what I wanted with uh, with with redoing this finance screen. So 
Now you see the total cost for your railroad, your road, your air, your water, your investments, and it's the capital investments that I wanted separated out. And to be honest, I'd much prefer this to be turned into a proper balance sheet with a proper balance sheet and a P&L. So, because like, I don't want to see my capital investments in my P&L, my profit and loss. I just want to see like, what, like, what are my running costs? I want my capital invest, uh, capital investments separate. Uh, yeah, the only thing you got to worry about is your uh, is your loan interest, and uh, loan interest is now calculated on a uh, a monthly basis. So there's none of that like taking out a loan and then paying it off like December thirty first. Oh no, it's monthly now. But it means that it's a good idea to like if you've ever got spare cash, right? Repay it off because you'll get the benefit from it. So let's crank that up. Now let's take a look at um, took it out. Take a look at our, our, our lines. I want vehicle manager, and it's the brown line. It's Kirkpatrick Conquerbrief. Yeah, there's no vehicles on it. Let's put some vehicles on that line. I, I probably haven't got any on this line either. Don't think I put any on that one. So let's grab quickly a, uh, a depot or depot, depending on which part of the world you're in. And we want, uh, what do I want? I want buy vehicles. I want 10 of those. And those go onto the brown line. There we go. Out they come. Yes, we're off. Split up, boys. Spread out. Conquer the world. <laughs> you know, I should I should put the icons on for depots so I can see the depots as well. Uh, that's stations, depots. There we go. Hooray. And there was much rejoicing. All right. We need to crack on. Um, I am going to let this run for a while now. Look at this. We've got loads of people waiting. Um, I'm going to let this run for like a fair old while and just let this settle down. And what we should be able to do, or what I should be able to do over time, is, is pay off all of this loan that I've taken out to do this. But of course, they've got to start making, uh, they've got to start making profits these days. Oh, and some of them are already starting to turn a profit. All right, let's run it for a while. And, uh, and see what it looks like. Alrighty, so I've been running this for, I don't know, 15, 16 years, something like that. But of course, it's still January the 1st, 1850, and I've got enough to pay off the last bit of my loan. So, that's my entire loan paid off. Excellent. How are my lines doing? My lines are doing beautifully, all making a nice profit. But Sky, you say, ah, you've got to factor in the um, replacing all the vehicles. No, you haven't, because it's all changed. It works completely differently now. Let's pick a vehicle at random and take a look. So, first thing, if we look at the details, you'll see that it now has a condition. And this starts off as very good, and then goes good, mediocre, bad, very bad. And we're at 45% now, so that's going to be hitting bad very soon. They also have a, a, a value, and the value depreciates over time. And they've actually put together, I should show you this, they've actually put together um, a, a company valuation now. You've actually got a bit of a balance sheet. And you can see the value of your assets is constantly dropping as they depreciate in value. Um, you've got your liquidity, which is how much cash you've got uh, in, in hand. And then your inventory, your real estate, your vehicles. See, all the vehicles are going down. And then how much debt we've got. Well, we've eliminated our debt now. So the value of our company, when you... Add and subtract all that is uh, eight hundred ninety-three thousand. It's always changing. And how much profit did we make in the last twelve months? We made about just over a quarter of a million. Let's take a look at the finances. So we have been making around about a quarter of a million every year. Beautiful. But hang on a second. Like you don't have to replace vehicles. Like what? Well, that sounds wrong. Uh, it works differently. It works. It works differently. So. As the condition of vehicles drop, right, their emissions go up. Now, emissions is a whole new thing in the game. Let's go and look at a town. So let's go and look at let's go and look at Alex Town on the Thomas. So quick look on this. I love the transparency of Transport Fever 2. Uh, it's so much more transparent than the original Transport Fever. So um, there are various pluses and minuses to your town growth. Okay, so destinations is one. So we've got 450 destinations. That's people going to different places. And uh, that gives us a plus 30% to growth. 
which translates into an extra 36 residents. And then private transport, people being able to get to places on their own, that gives us plus 20. And then we get also get bonuses if we start supplying them with goods. Now this has changed. It used to be that um, EPEC, every, every product was demanded by every city. But now, no, it's just two. Now I thought that that was gonna be bad. I thought that was gonna be limiting. But you know what, it's not, and we'll get into that later. Uh, then you've got um, the, the quality of various things like stations, traffic, and emissions. And as you get more traffic, you'll get, uh, and any kind of transport, you'll get more emissions. And this is pollution. This is noise pollution, uh, pollution like in terms of fumes and stuff from cars and trains and all that kind of stuff. And the, the higher up the emissions go, you'll get a minus to your town growth. You'll drive people away. So there's various ways that you could deal with that. If we take a look at emissions, you can see where the emissions are. They're on our routes. And you can, um, you can, uh, you can mitigate emissions in a couple of ways. Uh, firstly, you can route, you can route your, your trucks and trains and whatever away from residential areas. Um, that will, that will obviously mitigate this, uh, but you can also do it with maintenance. Let's talk maintenance for a second, because I was kind of kind of getting into that. Uh, let's get rid of the emissions. Okay, so let's look at our lines. Let's pick a vehicle at random. Okay, so your condition is now mediocre, and because your, your condition has gone down, emissions start to go up. So you imagine like a, a badly maintained vehicle or an old vehicle that hasn't been well maintained, uh, it's going to get creaky and cranky, and if it's a if it's a motor vehicle, then it's going to be emitting more fumes and whatever. So rather than having to replace it, you just need to maintain it better. I, I really like this mechanic. So what they've done, if we look um, if we look at vehicle manager and we look at a particular line, they've added this maintenance. So if you run a vehicle at normal then that's what you need to maintain it at a, at a very bad condition okay so if you have normal maintenance then a vehicle will degrade to the point where it's very bad at which point I think you get like plus seven to your emissions uh, which makes a, a noticeable difference but you can crank your maintenance up to high in which case the running costs go up by 25% that will keep a vehicle at, um, uh, at at mediocre. In fact, let's let's pick a road vehicle. Let's pick you. So we're currently at mediocre. Maintenance is normal. So this will degrade to very bad, right? But if we crank this up uh, on this line to high, if I apply it, there we go. Thank you. Uh, now it'll be kept at mediocre condition, so it'll never go worse than mediocre, which keeps the um, the emissions at a reasonable-ish kind of level. Or you can crank it up to very high, running costs go up by 50%, and then it'll be kept in very good condition, which means it'll be kept at lowest emissions. And if we leave that there for a bit, we should see this go up. The vehicle condition is improving. Now, now it's up to good you can see the, the percentage is going up. 63%. Come on, go up some more. Still 63. 73. So that's that's what they've done. Instead of having to replace the vehicles, you just like pay more to maintain them better. Or you don't. Like if you want if you just want to make money, keep it on normal and live with the emissions. But obviously, that's going to affect town growth. I like the balance. I like. I, I do like the way they've implemented this mechanic. Okay, so that's that. Um, I've, oh, I think I think I've covered all the stuff to do with that. We can get on. We can get on now to a new line, new line, new line, and more new mechanics. All right. So we're going to put in a fuel line. Uh, where am I going to put in a fuel line? I'm going to put in a fuel line. Let's see. Where's um, Where's Honkle Briff? Here's Honkle Briff. Now, Honkle Briff, I need to turn on my industry symbol so that I actually see what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> that would be handy. 
here we go. So now I've made this over here, Hoglebrith City, because we look at this. We've got three oil wells and over here, and as we know, all oil belongs to Hoglebrith. And if you don't know what Hoglebrith is, um, as well as being one of my patrons, it also stands for hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, bromine, iodine, fluorine. Yeah, it's one of those acronym thingies. Because he's into that, he's an engineer and he's into that kind of stuff. Right, so um, we're going to be taking oil from here and we're going to be shipping it all the way. Uh, well, we're going to be shipping it to this refinery because it's now a two step process to produce fuel. You don't just ship your crude oil to a refinery and boom, you've got fuel. Oh no, you have to ship it to a refinery to get it turned into refined oil, so just pure oil. So it starts off as crude oil gets turned into oil and that's a two to one ratio by the way and then we're going to ship it out almost a wobbly boat to town to uh, to this fuel refinery up here and we're going to turn it into fuel and then we're going to ship it back and then start shipping it out to a bunch of towns around here which happen to need fuel so Honkelbrief needs fuel Guggets needs fuel and uh, Alex town on the Thomas needs fuel and and barton town needs fuel so we've got a big fuel demand around here but different towns require different things but this is one of the reasons i've picked this map because this map is kind of awesome see like like down here joburg needs um goods and machines is it goods and machines yes machines and goods hooray i'm learning i'm learning all the new icons and stuff so should we get this done let's get this done so what do we want we want over here and I've got to try and, i seriously got to try and pick like the right harbours and stuff. Because you know what I'm like? There. And then we want to hook that up with a nice little road. Which I'm going to run from the edge of here. And you can see these blue connectors. They put in little paths. Uh, how do I want this? Probably like that. You can see these little paths. These are little footpaths that connect another change and let's see are we in range yes we're in range that lights up when we when we highlight this so we know that we're in range All right so that's that's that we've got to get the um, this this fuel shipped over here somewhere I want a fairly short route for the ships so I'm gonna have another harbor here but look at this terrain. It's pretty brutal. We're going to need a bunch of cash to do this. So I'm going to put in a harbour. Flip you around. And I'm going to have this. This is a, a, I picked this location because it's a kind of a really nice deep water harbour. It's, I mean, it doesn't matter. You can, you can put harbours on it, like basically anywhere. But I just thought aesthetically it was kind of pleasing. So let's get this. Now, this is going to be a bit expensive, but I think we're going to put you in kind of just sort of there-ish, maybe a little bit further over. So, boom, in you go. Now, again, these are configurable, right? So you could say, oh, you know what? I want um, I want another, another cargo uh, dock going in like that. Uh, that's the small one, or you can even have large ones. Oh, yeah like that but they're like half a million <laughs> can't afford that uh, and you know what we're gonna have to borrow some money to get all this done so let's start borrowing some cash you know what i'm just gonna borrow the whole 10 million all right so now what i want is a road going up from here up there but i'm gonna have to flatten gonna have to flatten this a bit now the terrain tools we'll get more into the terrain tools in future episodes but that the um they're so good They've actually now added a proper flatten. So from here, let's uh, increase my brush size a little bit and uh, crank the strength right up. Uh, but this is so expensive. Look at this. I've got um, 10,350. So from here, I'm just going to go and flatten this out here just a little bit. You can see it's nice and flat. But awesome. Okay, but you could, look, that's just cost me a hundred thousand just to flatten that. 
terrain. It's so damn expensive. Uh, and you've also got the paint tools. Look at all of these textures we've got to play with. It's, there's loads of them. It's awesome. The only one that's missing that I wish was in there was wheat field. And it's kind of not. There are some kind of brownish ones, but there isn't a nice kind of yellowy wheat field one. Which is a shame because they do they do have wheat fields. Where's look, this is I this is the kind of thing I want. Look big wheat fields. Um alright, so get on with this guy for heaven's sake. You've got, got to get this finished. So I'm gonna put in a road going from from there where it's connected to that. And I'm gonna take it up the hill a bit. Uh, let's see. Yep, yeah, that'll probably do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Right, then I want a train station. First train station going in. So let's have you in there. Cool. Then it's time to lay some tracks. Hooray. <laughs> oh, God, this is so good. All right, so we want track coming out down here. So we're going to go over here to this refinery. So we want to put in another station over here. So buildings, we want, this one's going to be a through station. And there's a couple of ways to do this with these um, new configurable buildings. I'll flip this around and line it up. This is going to go in there. Maybe, maybe back one. So, actually no. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so I can either like specify how many tracks and whatever I want here uh, and the, the length of the platform and all that kind of stuff. But I'll show you, if I put that in, I can then go into configure. Yep, that's, try configuring the right building. Here we go, configure. And then you've got your options. So we can go with, uh, okay, I want to put in another track. So you just have these, these blue bits that you add onto. So I can put in an extra track and then I can say, okay, eh, now I'll have a, a platform on this side. Now, do I want a passenger platform or do I want a cargo platform? I want a cargo platform, please. So we'll have cargo platform going on there, there and there. Now I can say, you can do it this way or when I put the station in originally, uh, if I grab another station, uh, I could have gone over here and said, okay, I want two, and it would have done the same thing. You can also put in uh, this building in different places. Like, it's, uh, it's so good. It's so good. Right. We are going to put in a bridge. Now, this is something that's changed. So, hold down the shift key. Come on. Click, and about there should do it. Okay, so there we go. So I'm trying to line it up with this bridge so it looks half decent. Yeah, bring you back a touch. Something like that. And then obviously we want it flat. Yes, it is flat. 117,000. Yes, that'll do pig. All right, cool. Ultimately, we're gonna come down to these two oil wells. Remember, it's a two to one ratio for crude oil to oil. So we're gonna pick up from both of these. So. We're going to get bulldozer. Going to rip out this road. I want a cargo terminus station. Flip you around now. If I yes, look, they both light up. That will do. Pig. In it goes. You know what? I've put that in as a um, as a two platform, and I didn't want a two platform. So you know what? Configure and. To get rid of that get rid of that there we go single single platform that's all we wanted all right cool did i do that deliberately so that i could show you that or did i do that by accident i will let you decide <laughs> pretty sure i know where my money would be uh so then we'll run this track out here we'll run this bridge down to there now Remember, early on, trains don't have tremendous pulling power, so you want slopes to be as gradual as possible. So you know what? That will do. Yep, that'll do. 
little bit expensive, but worth it, I think. Boom, that's in. Then that's going to go into this platform here. Cool. And then this one, this other platform, is going to go out to meet up with that. Right, that goes into there. That's ah, all nice and flat. Boom, done. All right, so now remember, we're bringing from two oil wells to one refinery. So we're going to want, and then we're shipping from that, that refinery uh, one to one up to the, um, the well, it's the fuel refinery. So this is the, this is an oil refinery. No, that's a coal mine, you bone in. Uh, this is the oil refinery. This is the fuel refinery. So we're going to want twice as many trains on here as we have on this one. So we're going to start off with one on here. So I want two on here, which means I've got to put in a passing place. Now, uh, I want a passing place in the middle of there and there, which is going to be pretty much where this bridge is. So I think what we'll do is we'll have, we'll have a passing place that maybe starts. Oh, that'll do. And then comes across the bridge. And then probably goes into there like that will do nicely. And then we want a couple of signals. So for anybody that's not familiar with signals, basically ask yourself, right, if I'm a train driver, do I want to check that the track is clear ahead before I go into it? So here, where you're merging into this line, right, you definitely want to make sure that there's no trains on this block of track before you pull in. And the same at the other end. So there. So you want to make sure that there's no trains on that track before you go onto it. All right. All right, cool. So having done that, um, we can, I think, put the lines in. So station to that station, and then that station to that station, transfer onto the, uh, the boat. Boat goes over to uh, this harbour. Yep, all good, all good. Right, let's get lines in. New line. This is going to go from here to the oil refinery. And then we want another new line, which is going to go from the oil refinery to the one linking to the docks. And we should just check. Yes. They're in proximity, so it, the, it'll be transferred from one to the other. Uh, and then we want a line for these guys as well. So line, new line, and we go from this harbour to this harbour. Hooray. And there's, our, oh, look at that. That is a lovely straight line. Well, straight-ish. Straight enough for ships. Here we go. What's it called? Shipyard. That was the word I was looking for. Uh, we can put this probably over here would be good. So let's have you somewhere like, somewhere like that would be nice. Cool. Alrighty. And I'm going to want, I mean, really, um, one ship is going to be fine to start off with. So let's buy vehicles. We want a Zoroastra, a Zoroaster, uh, which uh, will carry, um, oil and fuel. So it's going to ship oil out and fuel back. And having your, your lines running stuff both ways, that's the way to make money. So we're going to buy one of those and we're going to put that on line three. Yes, line three. At here, wait until you are full, right? So this is full load all compartments, okay? Because a ship has two, uh, has two or more compartments. So we're gonna say, wait until you're completely full. And then when you get to Wobbly Boat Town Annex at the other end, I want you to wait until any of your compartments is full. So we'll say full, full load any. So that means it's gonna it's gonna go out full and come back at least half full. And the reason I'm not saying wait until all of the oil has been processed into fuel is because sometimes some of it goes missing so typically, like, you'll bring 90 fuel out here on a Zoroaster. 
um, but it'll process it and you'll only get like 89 and then the but then the ship will just sit there for ages and ages and ages and never do anything so setting it half full good idea all right so that's that and then um, now we could do the trains all right so let's do let's do a depot over here so we want what do we want we want a depot a train depot train depot it's gonna go I want it wind up nicely with that and I want to set it back a little bit like there should be good god I hope so then tracks I'm gonna have track which goes from there curving around like that and then going onto this line like that and then same thing on the other side probably want it a little bit more angle there and join onto this track that's nice all right cool so now we can get to we get trains on there I don't need to put signals on here but I'm going to we're gonna have a signal before you join that one and a signal here before you join that one okay so trains let's get some trains on here by vehicles we want now we've only got this Russian class 5 type 1 at the moment so obviously it's gonna be one of those and then we're gonna have tank cars now a Zoroaster the ship holds 90 fuel or 90 oil so we want um, the trains to be carrying at least half that so two journeys to fill a ship makes sense doesn't it there we go so we've got three of them we are going to put one of them uh, you know what we'll, we'll put train three uh, onto line now which one do I want that's line one that's line two onto line two and train one and two we're going to put onto line one which is the one going back to the uh, to the oil wells okay so we've got our trains hooked up oh man good lord I think we can actually kick this off and get this rocking and rolling so let's turn it on let's see our first train come out because this is like a big moment here we go and a new train that we haven't seen before and is it lovely and shiny with beautiful brass work? Oh, yes, it is. Has he got a little bell to ring? I don't think he's got a little bell. See, this is the thing with the, the Russians. They don't, they don't know how to have fun. If you've got a blooming train, you want a bell on it that you can ring. He's probably got a whistle, though. because like, You've got a whistle on there. I don't see a whistle, but he may well have a whistle on there. All right, so that's going to go that way. These are going to go. Right, what we want to see is, are these producing? So have I got it all set up correctly? And they are producing. Awesome source. Now, the, I'll go into more detail about how this works in the next video. So this is, um, it's split into production, shipping, and transport. And you need to get all of these up to a certain level in order to get the uh, the production to go up to the next level. But like I said, we'll go into more detail on that later. But you can see oil is starting to appear on the line. We've got 48, 49 waiting already. Where's our first train? Here it is. Oh, and there's a bear. There's, don't hit the bear. Are you going to run through the... No. Oh, yes. <laughs> the train killed the bear. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Oh, awesome source. But you know what? If you want to see this, uh, this oil get onto the ship and watch the ship sail across the ocean and then bring the fuel back and then see if we can actually make a profit on this line... You're going to have to come back for the next episode. By God, I think this has been a fairly long episode for a first episode. So much to cover. But guys, it's it's kind of blooming beautiful, isn't it? I can't wait to see your comments. I'll catch you for the next one. Peace out.